Welcome to LearningEngineer.com. We engineer learning for efficiency. I'm Michael Langdon. And today I'm going to show you another Flash CS3 uh, program that I wrote. Um, it's a video displayer. <coughs> and basically it feeds off the RSS feed from my site my video site at learningengineer.blip.tv. So all I have to do from now on is upload videos to my Blip TV site and they will automatically be sent into the RSS feed and then when you when I run this application from my website or wherever the list of videos that are available show up on the left here and then the video shows up on the right here. So if I want to see something like um, CD Burner XP Pro, I just click on it and then the video will show up here automatically. I'm going to stop it right now. Um, if you want to download a video, whether it be a flash video or a QuickTime movie, because I always upload using QuickTime, all you have to do is click one of these buttons and you'll see what happens. This dialog box comes up and then you can actually save this if you want and you click save and click save and then you can see that it will automatically uh, start a download for you. And if you want to cancel the download, you just cancel the download. You, s you can see that these uh, buttons then disable. <coughs> and you can even go on to view another movie while that is down there. Okay. So I'm going to click cancel the download for now. I'm going to stop this and then I'm going to show you how exactly I built this. So the first thing we need to do is we need to look at the stage. I've set the stage up here. Uh, down here you'll see my properties. It's 930 wide by 530 pixels tall. It is large enough to fit a video player here that I create with code. Uh, that's 640 by 480. This is uh, your basic list box. Um, we come over here to the components. <coughs> You'll see that it's just a list right here and you drag it onto the desktop and tweeze it out or pull it out. Then I have three buttons here, the download move, uh, the flash video LVV file and the cancel download button and these are all located on the same layer, the components layer. Uh, I originally had a videos layer but you really don't, I really wouldn't need this layer, I could get rid of it. And then we have a text layer and the text layer is for my progress bar because I also have a progress bar here, it's just not visible right now which is right here, a progress bar, so you drag that out, that's not visible. And I also have a label here that's not visible. And what this does is this label just says uh, downloading when it comes up. And you can see that I haven't given all of these an instance name. You have to give them instance names if you want to be able to, co to alter them with code or action script. So this the list box is LB, the download QuickTime is label move, this is LB LV for the flash, and then this is cancel download, so download cancel. This is progress a label, progress LBL, and then the progress bar is download progress. Okay, and that's all that I need on my stage. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go into the action script code itself. So actions. 
So here we are in our actions. This is all the action script and I've gone through this all in very, very detailed explanations of what everything is, why you need it, and what it does. So, and this will be on my website. Um, I should just have it right on the front page or it'll be under the download section. But I'm going to quick go through with this with you. First of all, you need your import statements. I need these two items, the progress bar mode and the video, so I can create the video in code. <coughs> these have to be here. Then I need to create a file reference. This is for the download. I need to change the download progress bar, the mode to progress bar manual, so I can actually control as the line grows. Then, of course, this here is my video, okay, including uh, the skin that I've chosen to use, which is the bottom part. It's just the controls at the bottom. And then this adds the movie, this to the stage. And you can see here when I locate um, the video, I'm actually setting it, uh, the X and the Y values, to um, in basically the, it's kind of attached to the list box that has all the movie names. So you can see here that I basically say to locate it at uh, plus 10 of the width of the label. Um, this adds it to the stage. This changes the skin background color from the blue to the yellow. Uh, this sets the transparency to 1 so it's completely opaque. I could change this so that it's slightly dimmed. And then, of course, the playback source. This is the first video that loads. Okay. Now, we're getting to the XML file, and I'm going to have to go to my browser in a little bit, but you need a URL loader. Uh, I need a, an add event listener. Um, this tells us basically when the XML file has been loaded. Um, then you have the new URL request. You, I, to be honest, you can actually put this. Uh, oh, actually, this is right. So this is the. It tells it. It's telling it to then to load the XML file, and this is the URL request necessary. And then this is the HTTP or the URL for that. Um, this is the first. Uh, string or a link to the download buttons. Okay, so these are going to be attached to the download buttons, and this is the first video again. So that's why it's there. It's hard coded. <coughs> this is attached to the item list, and it just uh, runs a function called item change when it's clicked on. And then this is the item change. So it tells me to. Uh, the source is attached to the item that's been selected on the list box, and then it just tells it to play right away. And then it t attaches the um, the data from the list to the buttons to these um, variables, movie link and FLV link, that are then going to be attached um, to the button. So this is actually the data from the list box. It's this here. Let me move this over. It's this here. Then we're going to do our XML stuff. So this is an XML variable. This is a namespace variable, and you have to use this namespace variable with some XML files because of the way they use uh, colons to deprecate uh, the information within an XML file. I have to create a data data provider because I'm going to attach the information from the XML file into the data provider and then that gets attached to this list box. And then this is the function called onloaded and this gets fired when the XML file has been loaded. Okay, there's onloaded. So that when that gets fired, this is going to get fired. So then it sends all the data loaded uh, from the XML